Two down, two to go. We're taking a look at the third of four unique color palettes curated by Sherwin-Williams as part of their color mix forecast for 2021. We already talked about Sanctuary and Continuum. You asked for it, so let's take a deep dive at Tapestry. If you don't know me, I'm James from thepaintpeople.com, which is a website all about painting and decorating. Whether you're looking for color advice or technical painting advice, our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the colorful content you crave. Tapestry's description is exuberance meets restraint in today's more curated take on maximalism. The vibrancy of this palette, including lavish pinks and greens, finds inspiration and in classicism, but with just a touch of cutting edge. So basically, what I got from this description is it's super fun and vibrant, but also appreciative of classic Roman aesthetics. Even though a lot of the color choices here are rather avant-garde, there also tends to be a theme of a slightly milky quality to them that sort of represents little accent colors you would find in marble or precious gemstones which is a perfect segue into our first color, Alexandrite. Based on the gemstone that was discovered in the early 19th century in Russia, Alexandrite is a beautiful darker green that is fun, vibrant, but also reflects that classic antique feel to it. Now here's where that milky quality comes in, because while we have quite a bit of green in here, and a little bit of yellow to prevent it from feeling overly teal, you also have that little bit of gray and white to soften the saturation just a little bit. In color theory, this is usually reflected as being a tint or a base color mixed with white, which increases its lightness. This is a color that I would prominently feature in a family room or a living room or dining room. It's just a bold color that I would not want to hide in an upstairs bedroom. Our next color, on the other hand, is a slightly tougher sell for me, and it's called Perfect Periwinkle. Super cute name, which sort of ties into its overall feel. Its depth is very similar to the previous color, so technically it would be classified as a darker color or an accent color. At its base, it's a blue, but it's a tinted blue that uses quite a bit of white to neutralize the amount of depth within it. What makes it a little different, however, is its use of magenta in its undertones, which gives it that super subtle pinkiness that makes it feel a little more powdery. This would not be my first choice as a blue, but that's just because it's more than a blue. It has a fairly unique look to it, and you could use it in a wide variety of areas. Personally, I think it would look quite nice on exterior siding. Next up, we have Tricorn Black, which is one of my personal favorite black or off-black colors by Sherwin-Williams. Its LRV of three tells you pretty much all you need to know. It's extremely dark, but also has a little bit of personality. Hiding in the background is just a little bit of earthy red, which could equate to the rust found in wrought iron. And that's what I tend to equate this color to. You'll definitely find off blacks that will have a little bit more red or a little bit more green, but especially in this collection of colors, tricorn black sits in that sweet spot. This leads us to one of the most polarizing colors, or at least one of the more distinguishing choices in the tapestry color palette, and it's called Jovial. This one's fun, and it's extremely exuberant. It's pretty upfront with its use of peachy pink with also a little bit of orange mixed in too. It's a mid-tone color, so you can use it in areas that have a moderate amount of light, but this is a color choice you have to really appreciate. I know that seems obvious, but this one particularly will create a very specific look that could be better suited as a bedroom color or maybe in a more compact kitchen. Throw it in your laundry room if you want a little bit of an easygoing fun vibe in there. From peachy coral to icy off-white, embellished blue is a 79 LRV light aquamarine color that balances a dash of gray with a touch of blue and a hint of green. There's a fine line between green and blue colors to look teal or minty, and it's sometimes tough to distinguish whether it favors green or blue more heavy handedly. This one just feels like a light icy green to me, yet I can understand why people would interpret it as a blue. The little bit of blue in there would be further accentuated with surrounding warm creamy curtains or off-white baseboards and casings, but all in all, it's a fun choice that can be used liberally due to how light it is. I would just caution my green haters out there, don't let the name embellished blue fool you. This is a light color you would be wise to test out first before committing it all over your walls. If you were a fan of Perfect Periwinkle but were a little bit concerned with how vibrant it appeared, 
then Aleutian would be an interesting alternative. Its undertones are similar because of its use of blue, gray, and that little touch of magenta, which neutralizes the blue aspect, and it creates a frosty, silvery look to it. It's also a little bit lighter. Even though it's on the darker side of mid-tone colors, it's definitely more gray feeling as it tones down the saturation quite a bit more. I think this one feels airy and luxurious, and even though there's not a whole lot of warmth in it, it seems to incorporate perfectly with cooler and warmer surrounding tones. Although this seems to be one of the safer options, not everything needs to be bold and polarizing in order to make a statement. The off-white of this collection fits perfectly into the classicism theme of this entire color palette, and it's called Greek Villa. Its LRV of 84 puts it firmly into the off-white grouping of colors, and its undertones leave you with a very light, warm, neutral color. Greek Villa has been featured in many different Sherwin-Williams color collections, and it's been a staple choice for people needing that softer alternative to plain old white. Because its warmth is a little more beige rather than yellow, it'll work really nicely with blues and greens in this color palette, and won't clash with the more peachy colors either. Surprise, surprise. This choice of white really makes sense here. Speaking of warmer colors, Enjoyable Yellow is the warmest color in this palette by far. And even though it's a yellow, there is still that presence of peachy red sort of mixed in, which has that slightly classic antique feeling to it. I find this color to be particularly enjoyable. And it's because yellow can sometimes feel intrusive with how vibrant it is. It can be a little hard on the eyes, but the orange added in enjoyable yellow gives off a really pleasant appearance. The LRV here is 71, and I suspect that it doesn't really contain any black or gray colorant in it, which would normally create that shaded effect. This color is lovely, it's buttery, and it's rather easy going too. Leading us directly to the color that jumps out at you when you first see this color palette, Jaipur Pink. If you thought Jovial was pink, you ain't seen nothing yet. Jaipur Pink is a color that I describe as that super artificial strawberry ice cream pink. You know, that soft serve stuff. The thing is, even though it's artificial, I still really like it. While it's definitely a lot more pink than jovial, there still seems to be that touch of orange in the undertones, which prevents it from feeling super cold. This is the color that defines the tapestry color collection to me. And while pink can be the trickiest color to incorporate in your higher traffic areas, I almost feel that you need to showcase it in order to truly utilize it properly. There's no point in going along with this color palette, but just sticking with the token off-white or cool gray color. You gotta go with this one. But I also completely understand the people that just reserve these types of colors to playrooms and bedrooms, rather than the more prestigious grown-up rooms like living and dining rooms. Perhaps limit this one to artwork and pillows and curtains, but I'd love to see someone just go all out with Jaipur Pink. It's just so fun. As for our final color, you may be experiencing a little bit of deja vu because we have another color here that can be described as a teal. Cape Verde is a deep green leaning teal that has a slight emerald quality to it. Don't let that vibrant warmth fool you though. This color is dark. It has an LRV of seven, and whatever room it's used in on the walls, it will make the space feel a little more closed in, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're wanting that room to feel a little more cozy or even elegant. But for everyone else that wants to keep things a little more open feeling, you could opt for a much lighter variation that still has those same undertones present. We're almost through all four color mix palettes for 2021. All that's left is the final collection called Encounter, which I kind of interpret as an amalgamation of the other three. You can check out some of the other color mix colors in these boxes over here so you can get a full picture of the entire collection of colors all together. An awesome and free way to support this channel is clicking that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps us keep creating the color content you crave. See you on the next one.